The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, good afternoon and good morning everyone. Welcome to today's Chat with an Expert. Today we're going to talk about Search Simplified in Merlin. As usual, some webinar guidelines. We're going to keep this short and sweet. It'll be less than 30 minutes. I am recording the session. It will be available. Please ask your questions in the chat window. I will stop periodically and go take a look at the questions that are there and do my best to answer them. And of course, as always, the questions do not need to be related to today's topic. And as always, suggestions for future topics are welcomed. Just a couple of other, house, other housekeeping things I wanted to mention before we get into it. Merlin U, our online training uh, series has gone live. It's online. We talked about that in a previous chat. If you go to our newly rebranded website, www.merlin1.com, you can join Merlin U and register for it just by clicking on the Merlin U link in the toolbar. Merlin X version 6 has been released and is now being installed on some of our customers. You'll actually see version, version 6 today. It's what we'll be using for our presentation. It includes new features like improved password functionality, um, the ability to share collection folders, improved taxonomy searching, additional versioning options, and there are many other enhancements as well to put uh, polish on the product. One of the other things that you'll see is a new and improved theme in that application. So let's 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 go through. Oops, went too fast. Let's go through what we're going to talk about today and what I'm going to show you and how to make search simplified. So we're going to talk about basic searching. And for a lot of you, this may be a review or it may be a little bit of polish on your search skills that you already have. And for some of you, it may be eye opening, but hopefully everybody will learn something from today's session. We're going to talk about basic searching. I'm going to show you some examples. We're going to talk about advanced searching using some of the advanced searching tools. We're going to talk about how to save searches. We're going to talk about a new feature in version 6 called auto update. And we're also going to talk about resources on where to get additional help in searching. And I'll show you how you can access that in the online Mer Merlin manual. So in terms of basic searching, I'm going to talk about what we're going to cover today, and then I'm going to show it to you. I'm going to talk about how you can configure your search so that you can use a thesaurus and that you can build a thesaurus that uh, has terms in it related to your business. I'm going to show you how you can configure your search to do root word searching. Again, I'm going to remind you that you can search much like you would a, any web search engine uh, and I'm also going to show you how you can take advantage of Boolean searching, which is really, really powerful and will help you drill down to find your search results. We're going to talk about advanced searching, how you can search on specific fields, search for date ranges or a specific date and time, or how you can uh, search other fields that are like checkbox fields and star fields for ratings. And so all of those things are searchable. I'm going to show that to you as well. I'm going to show you and remind you how you can save your searches as either shared or private searches how you can email search results to other users, and also how you can set up an alert so that you can get an email whenever new content arrives in your Merlin without you actually being logged into Merlin to know that that's happened. I'm going to show you our new feature, Auto Update. It's configurable on the server, so you can set the time, and I'm going to show you how that works as well. It's pretty simple. 
I'm going to also show you how you can access the online manual. Many of you may not uh, have recalled that you can do that, but it's available from Merlin's options menu. And from the online manual, you, you can go to Appendix A. There's a page and a half there specifically related to search tips, and it describes each of the Boolean operators specifically that we can be talking about during today's presentation. So that's my slideshow. Any questions before we get started? OK, then. So um, I'm going to log into my demo server. This is our new login page for version 6. Notice the pictures take the entire screen. Um, so for those of you that have set up a custom login page, you might want to redo those pictures and make them a slightly higher quality. And also, I would make them all horizontal so that you can fill the screen much like I've done here. You can control the banner that's here. Again, it's really easy to do. And you can also control the text that's here. And all of that is done in the same UI where you previously set up your login screen in the admin area, login screen area. So I'm going to go ahead and log in. And we're going to talk about basic searching first. Oh, um, someone's asking, am I going to cover controlling keywords? I hadn't planned on that, but let's make that part of today's topic. So we'll do that as well as, as we go through this. OK, and we'll also delve a little bit into other controlled vocabularies that can set up. So that's more about how you can make it easier for your users to search and not so much how a user can take advantage of the search tools. So uh, that was a great su suggestion, Vicki. We'll, we'll talk about that as well in today's session because I, I'm not going to take up a whole lot of time. Um, here I've got my search palette, OK? And in my search palette, I've got lots of things I can do here. So the first thing I can do is I can control the type of material I'm searching for. And this is rather generic. So this first button is searching for all photos. This next button is searching for all photos and video, uh, sorry, and audio. So it's video and audio. This third button is, is, is called Other, and it allows me to search for Microsoft Office documents for graphics in any format, including uh, SVG files or animated GIF files. Um, I can also uh, search for InDesign documents or PDF documents using the other button. And the last button, most of you probably don't have this last button. It's for searching structured text. And it's a way publishing systems store text in Merlin, so like published stories. And so uh, you may or may not be configured for that. Um, so that's, uh, uh, that's how I can control uh, very generic file types. You can also search for specific file types and extensions, and I'll show you that in a minute. So now I'm searching for all of my file types. I'm searching for photos. I'm searching for audio and video. I'm searching, searching for other content, and I'm also searching for text files. So let's talk about some other things. So this little disclosure triangle in the search area, and it's so small, many of you might have even missed it. But if I click on that, it allows me access to my search options. And my search options allow me to set my search mode. And I recommend you set it to Boolean search. Other options allow you to set it to all words. That means all of the words in your search have to be true. But you can accomplish the same thing in Boolean searching by adding the word and. This and that and something and else. OK, or I can set it to any words, which is the same as adding the word or in your Boolean searching. And I'll show you that. So this or that or something or else. Or I can do an exact phrase, and I can accomplish that in Boolean searching by putting quote marks around my search criteria. Or I can phrase my search criteria as a question. But I recommend Boolean searching. It's the most powerful and the most flexible. 
my other search options allow me to use a thesaurus. So if you've created a thesaurus in Merlin, checking this box will tell Merlin to use the thesaurus when it's running a search. Unchecking it will tell it to ignore the thesaurus that you might have created. A thesaurus is a great place to use acronyms that might be used within your organization or sports teams or colleges and universities or and, and similar names. So instead of searching for the Utes, which is the name of the University of Utah team, I could ser also search for the University of Utah and still find the Utes. Okay, um, word root search, that's also something you can do. Merlin will search singular or plural at the same time. There's no reason to do that. And there's no reason to build singular and plural keywords because Merlin will do both of them simultaneously without you having to call them out. Um, but word root search allows you to search for the word run. And it will also find ran and running. Okay, and so that's how my word root search is. And again, I recommend leaving these both turned on. It will make your search a little bit fuzzier and you might end up with a larger result set, uh, but I like that and I think it's a little bit easier to work with. So this would be my recommendation for how you set this up. Okay, just clicking outside of it will close that. Okay, so that's how you set searching up. Now to search, Type in a word or two. That's how most people search their web search engine. And so I'm going to start out by searching for Yellowstone Coyote. Okay. Now, because I had Boolean searching turned on, it's presuming the word and is in between here. I don't need to type it in. I could accomplish the same thing by typing in Coyote Yellowstone. OK, and so I'm going to go ahead and click my search and I'm going through 600 some odd thousand items. And look, I found a couple of photos and I found um, some text records in here as well. So if we wanted to eliminate the text records, I can do that by turning that off, re-execute the search. And now I have two photos. OK, now if I want to expand my search and say I want to search for Yellowstone and coyote, it's exactly the same thing. Here are the same two pictures. But if I change my Boolean operator from and to or, okay, and run my search, now I get 49 records of pictures that are either pictures of a coyote or pictures in Yellowstone National Park, okay? So that's pretty interesting that I can do that. Now let's take it a step further. I'm gonna scroll down through my photos and you can see lots of my vacation pictures from January, okay? But I'm seeing some videos in here and I'm seeing some PDF pages. So let's go ahead and get rid of those and narrow it just down to photos. And now I've got 31 records. And now again, as I scroll through, I've got lots of pictures from Yellowstone National Park. Hey, what's this? I have pictures of a hockey team, okay? So from the Phoenix Coyotes, all right? And so if I'd like to get rid of those because I don't want them being part of my result set, I can do that as well, okay? And so what I'm going to do is use another Boolean operator, the word not, and I'm gonna type in uh, hockey, Okay, and so it's going to search for Yellowstone or Coyote, but if it's hockey, it's going to exclude it. So I'm going to run that search and look, I narrowed it down to 25 records. Okay, really easy to do. Now, if I wanted to do even more powerful Boolean searching, and this is when high school algebra comes in, if everybody remembers high school algebra. I don't, and I became a photographer many years ago, so I wouldn't have to do high school algebra. But here it is, it's coming back to haunt me. I'm going to build a little equation. So I'm gonna use a parentheses here, and I'm gonna type in hockey or snowflake, and I'm gonna do something else. I'm gonna put an asterisk after the word snow. So it's gonna be snowflake or snow anything else. And I'm going to close my equation. 
So it's going to operate on the bits inside of the quotes first, inside of the, uh, sorry, the parentheses first, hockey or snow something. And then it's going to exclude those items. And then it's going to find anything that's left outside of my equation or outside of my parentheses. So when I run my search, I am going to expect the to get even fewer photos. So I'm going from 25. Oop, for some reason, my snowflake was not excluded. I need to figure out why that was. But that's how it's supposed to work. Okay. So I'll go search on that and figure out why. So that's a little bit about Boolean searching, but pretty much you can type in anything you want in here. So if I type in the word landscape and type in my last name, it's going to search for the word landscape and also find for any of the pictures that have my last name associated with the photos as well. And look, I got, sorry, 149 items were returned in my search results. OK, so that's a little bit about basic searching and how most of you have probably been using search. But I also can invoke more powerful searching. So let's clear my search and I'm going to click my little plus button that's here. Now, if you don't see the little plus button, it means your advanced search options are hidden. And so I'm going to toggle them to show you what that might look like. And that's the little triangle next to the word search. So if you have just a very, very simple and basic search, you can expand that by clicking the uh, triangle next to the word search, and then you can add additional options to your search. So you can add additional fields. So let's do this. I'm going to search the city field, okay? And I'm going to search for the city of Park City, which is where I live, and I'm going to click on search. And I just found 156 photos with Park City in the metadata, okay? And if we go open up my metadata palette, you can see the city is Park City, okay? Same thing with this photo, the city is Park City, okay? So let's, I'm gonna go ahead and close my metadata palette for right now, and let's expand on this and do some other searching, okay? So let's do, a date created. So I've got lots of date options and your system might have additional date options, but my Merlin system has the date created. It has the date something expires if you're using that. It has the date something was added to your Merlin system that may or may not be the date created, the date something was output, and also the date something was marked as published, okay? Your Merlin system may have fewer dates to search or additional dates to search. But this is an example. And I'm going to do date created. And I've got lots of date created options as well. I can search any specific date. So basically, it's ignoring the dates when I do this. But I can search is. That's a specific date. And I can click in my picker and say I'm looking for things that were created on a specific date. Or I can say I'm looking for things that were created before a specific date, and I can click my clicker, my picker, and click on January 1st of 2019. And so it's going to search for anything before the first of the year. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, 156 records. Now let's do a between date ranges, right? And so I could say I'm looking for things that were that were created between the 1st of January of 2018 and the 1st of January of 2019, for example. And no results. That's interesting. Okay, maybe that's true with my Park City creation. All right, so let's uh, do another search here. Let's go back and change this to before. And we're going to make it 1-1-2019. One, one, we're going to leave that, and we're going to search on that. And we've got my 156 records. Some other things you can search on might be color ratings, if you're adding those from Photo Mechanic, or, or star ratings. And so let's add a star rating to this. And I'm going to search star ratings are equal to or greater than four stars. And so I'm going to search that and I'm going to go from 156 records down to nine records. And maybe I only want to find approved content. 
So I'm going to say, I only want approved content that's four stars that was created before this date, whose city is Park City. And I'm going to click on search, and it's narrowed it down to these three photos. And notice in my hover or rollover text, it's telling me that this is marked as approved, okay? And if I go look at my metadata, I can see that it's approved. That's what this checkbox is. I can see the date created is before that date. I can also see the city is Park City, and you can also see that it's got five stars on this particular photo. So again, some advanced searching, and you can configure the search window to be any way you want it to be, okay? You can also save searches that you use a lot. So for example, if I were interested in setting up a saved search, so I'm gonna go ahead and clear my search and I'm gonna set up a different one. Maybe I'm interested in finding material where I'm the creator. So I'm gonna put my name in the creator or byline field. Okay, and maybe I'm only interested in finding content that has been created this year, right? So I can say in the last, one year, okay? And I'm gonna run that search and look, it got 94 results. There are 94 items where my name appears in the byline field that was created within the last year. If this is a search I want to use a lot, I can use my saved searches, right? And so I can create a shared saved search that other people can see or a private saved search that only I can see. So let's do this. I'm going to click on private. I'm going to click the plus button and it's named the search untitled. And I'm going to type in just uh, D Breslauer in last year. This is just a label. You can put in here any anything you want. And so I'm going to click on it and it's going to run that search and find those 94 items. Now, if you have permission, you can take a private search and you can make it shared just by dragging it up to shared. And it's asking me if I'm sure I'd like to do that. And so I'm gonna say yes, and you can see the searches here. I can also take that same search and drag it back down to private if one of two things are true. I'm an admin user or I'm the author or the creator or the owner of that search. So if either one of those are true, I can take shared searches and move them back down to private, okay? So that's a little bit about creating safe searches. I can organize my safe searches within collection folders. And so to do that, I would click on private and I would create a collection folder and I can name it whatever I want. And I'm just gonna call this one special. Okay, and then anything I drag into my special folder. Are you sure I want to do that? Yes, I am. Anything I drag into my special folder gets organized within that folder to help me organize my saved searches. Collections work in a very, very similar fashion, okay? But this, this today's presentation is all about searching, and so I'm going to just talk about my searching. So I've got save searches, I've got search collections to help you organize. I also have some other search tools here. So let's click on this one up here, Breslauer Recent Photos. And in my search tools area, I have some search options and you, or safe search utilities as they're labeled. And I can click on that and I can create an alert for a search. This is great if you want to notify yourself or other users that new content has arrived in the system or that content has been edited and now meets the search criteria. So if I wanted to set up an alert, I can type in my email address here. Oh, I should click in there to do that. Okay, and I'm gonna save that alert. Okay, and I'm gonna close this window. And so now, Anytime new pictures that arrive that meet this search criteria, and you can see it's my name in the byline field and date input in the last seven days. 
So anytime something new that gets added to the system that meets this criteria, it's going to send me an email and letting me know that there are new pictures or edited pictures in the system that now meet my criteria. So this might work for show me anything that's been approved in the last two days. And so if something has been approved that wasn't previously approved, you'll get an email based just upon that metadata edit. All right. So any questions about, about setting up an alert in Merlin to be notified when new content comes in? If you have a question, please go ahead and ask in the question area or in the chat window of the GoToMeeting webinar panel. Okay, back to my search utilities, okay? I can also email a link to somebody. So if I want someone else to see these search results, I can email a link by filling out this form, typing in their email address. Uh, I can even change the subject here, add the email text. Hey, these are some photos I thought you might like of Yellowstone National Park or whatever. Click send and it's going to send the email to someone else with a link in it. And if, if they click that search link, it's going to allow them to log into Merlin and it will immediately populate their screen with the search results. Even if it's a private search, they will still see the search results because you shared that link with them. You can also set up search searches to expire. So after a certain period of time, if you've got searches here that you're no longer going to use, for, for example, this Breslauer recent photos, you can set an expiration date on it and it will disappear from the Merlin system at that time, okay? So that's pretty easy to do as well. And finally, if you're an admin user, you can change the groups that are allowed to see shared searches and shared search folders. As you may recall, as you may recall, um, Shared searches and collections as well are done by the group you belong to. So if I belong to group A and you belong to group B, you won't see each other's shared collections or shared searches. But you can control that by going to view groups if you're an admin user and you can actually change the groups that can view collections and save searches and also change the groups that can edit those save searches or collections, okay? Now in the case of searches, that really wouldn't apply. All right, so that's a little bit about save searches. I wanna talk about auto update and then I want to uh, uh, talk about the manual. I know I don't have much time left. And then I want to answer Vicky's questions as well. So please stick around for that if you'd like to. But I would like to finish what I came here to show you. So in, in my search bar, I've got a new icon here next to the clear try and search button. Okay. And it's my auto update feature. And so clicking that will cause the icon to animate and it's turning. And every 20 seconds, it's going to refresh the results on screen, okay? Now, that 20 seconds is configurable. So if you need it to be longer, we can make it longer. OK, also, if you go in and manually click on search, it's going to disable the uh, the auto update. OK, and there are other things that might happen if you grab a content and start to work on it. Auto update is also going to disable itself because it figures that you're planning on doing something and the screen should stay where it is. But if you want to monitor content coming in in the background and move the Merlin window over to another screen or to a corner of your screen and put it on auto update, it's going to auto refresh. And you could even do that. Let's, let's do this. Let me clear my search and I'm searching for everything now. And now, uh, with auto update running as new content arrives in the system in the background, and I don't have a live feed, but as new content arrives in, it would automatically repopulate my screen every 20 seconds with that information. Finally, the last thing I really wanted to talk about is finding the manual. You can go to the options menu. You can say, I'd like to download the manual. It will open up the manual in another browser window or tab. And I'm not trying to overwhelm you with the 136 pages of the manual, but what I am trying to refer you to is the appendix, okay? 
And if I scroll down through my table of contents, contents in my Appendix A, I'm going to click on that. I've got some search tips here. And on the next page, this is, if I were going to print out any part of the manual, it might be this. Okay, these are my Boolean operators, the word and, the word or, the word not. We talked about the word those already. The word like, it's a phonetic operator. I'm looking for things that sound like something else. Okay, the word near, this word near another word. The, the ordered operator, this word, then the other word. So if I did little then rock, it meant it would only find little rock in that order, not rock little. Okay. And the at least term. Okay. So it means the term has to appear at least that amount of times or my question mark for a wildcard character and my asterisk for a wildcard character. These are all of my Boolean operators that Merlin will recognize and you can use them in your searches and they can be part of your saved searches. Okay, so that is primarily what I wanted to talk about today. If you've got a minute or two to stay with me, I'm gonna talk specifically about Victoria's questions about controlling keywords, all right? So when you want to search a keyword specifically, oh, and look, I've had keywords disabled from here because you can actually search them here, but it will work the same way as editing a keyword. So if I go down to my uh, metadata, and if I turn my editing on, and I go to my keywords field and I start to type in COL, it's going to auto complete and find everything that starts with the COL. And I'm going to keep on typing. And now I can do college. But what I really wanted to type in was college campus. Now, it's going, I'm going to hit the tab key to propose this as a keyword. Now, because I'm an admin user with permission to add keywords, it's asking me, would I like to use that as a keyword? And I'm going to say, why, yes, I would. And so now college campus becomes a valid keyword and also becomes part of my keyword list for both adding keywords and searching. If I'm not an admin user and I try to do that, it's going to reject that and tell me that I'm not allowed to add that as a keyword because I don't have that permission. Okay, so that is one type of controlled vocabulary. It's a very specific type of controlled vocabulary called uh, keywords. Okay, and there's a list that the admin user can manage from the administration area and they can go in and remove keywords or convert keywords from one word to another as terms change. Maybe a building on campus has been renamed and so you're going to change it from building A to, to the John Smith Memorial Building. Okay, And so that's something that you can do and you can manage in the admin keyword area. Another type of uh, list that you can manage is a pick list, okay? And it's a pull down pick list. And then you can see under department, I've got that configured with a bunch of medical departments because we did that for a demonstration we were doing. And so I can choose one of these or not. Or I've got another type of pick list. So in my country field, it's an autocomplete list. And so if I start to type, it's going to autocomplete from this list, United States of America. It works similar to keywords. However, it's administered a little bit differently. Keywords have to be the same for all of your users, but other pick lists like country or department or whatever other type of drop down list you might have created can be group or department specific. So some users in your organization might see one list and other users in another organization might see another list. So for example, users in the United States might see the 50 states and, the, and, and territories uh, under my state and province field, but if my Canadian users might see the Canadian provinces instead. So that's all configurable. So I've shown you uh, what I came to show you today. I also answered a little bit about Victoria's specific question about keywords. Vicki, if you've got some other questions about that, just let me know. I'm happy to go through that with you individually. Same thing with anybody else. If you've got some individual questions, things related to your own use case, 
please let me know. I'll be happy to go through them as well. Any other questions before me today, before we say good afternoon and good day? I've learned to pause a little bit longer. <laughs> what is the character length in keywords? Uh, Jill, it's pretty much as many as you want. It's unlimited. You can have uh, you could have 50 different keywords in there. It's unlimited. Behind the hood, there are two different keyword fields in Merlin because we used to only support nine different keywords of any length. And then people said, that's not enough. We want more. So we made it unlimited. Uh, and, and so behind the hood, we're using both of those keyword fields, but for your users and for the keyword list, it's the same. Uh, it doesn't matter really. So for your end users, it's pretty much unlimited. Anything else for me? I'm going to, I'm going to be patient. All right, everybody. Thanks for joining me today. I love doing these for you. If you've got particular topics you'd like me to uh, show, some ideas might be we've got new plugins for Photoshop and, and uh, InDesign, and I know we've talked about those in the past. If you'd like to see that or see a review of that, I'm happy to do that. If you think it's important to do a session on the new features in version six of Merlin, let me know. We'd be happy to do that as well, but we'd like to do these uh, for what you'd like to see. And if you don't, uh, let me know what you want to see. You get to look at what I'd like, what I think you should be seeing. So uh, um, rather than being uh, so set in my ways, I'd like for you to have a say in what we present as well. So thanks, everybody. Happy uh, Wednesday, March 27th. I look forward to seeing you next month in April.